Coin traders, what is going on? Thanks for joining me for the show. We're looking at Dogecoin, D O G E, on that ticker, the good old doggy coin. We know that memes have been a very strong narrative right now so far this cycle, especially with this coin just absolutely exploding. And in fact, if we actually look over here at Coin Market Cap, we're actually looking at Dogecoin coming in as the number six crypto based off of cryptocurrency. Obviously, we can invalidate, say, Tether just because it's a stable coin. So if we look at the actual cryptocurrencies here, we'd actually be looking at about the fifth ranked based off of market cap right around 50 billion. So that's a very nice market cap here. And if we actually look over at the all time high price right now and pull up the details for Dogecoin right now, come on. Then what we are looking at here is an all time high of just over 73 cents, 0.7376. So if we actually wanna look at the market cap though, and we look at the market cap, we're looking at just over that. And so effectively that would put the market cap just over or right around the $85 billion mark. So not too much more based off of that. So if we do get another price increase to that level, then obviously we would be looking at a much, much higher market cap. So right now from current prices up to that 73 cent mark, I actually need to scrunch this down here a little bit more. And then so from current prices right now, just below 35 cents up to about 73, we would be looking at about 113% gain. So basically just over double the price here. And to the $1 psychological mark, which we do think that it can actually hit this cycle, not that much more. So only about another 2x from here. So about, or excuse me, another 3x, which would be about a 200% gain here, just under in fact. So very high potential. And especially if we go ahead and look at all of this volume that has been coming in for Dogecoin, really really extremely big volume here coming in so for the last couple of days for example the candle that just closed looking at 2.495 billion and before that 2.507 billion and then the one coming in on the 6th of november 2.5 so a lot of volume coming in especially in the last week when crypto has been rallying off a lot of the good news and speculation with bitcoin at that all-time high and the great thing about Bitcoin hitting an all-time high is that it really does start to spark a lot more confidence in the overall crypto space, which is just so good for altcoins. And that's kind of why we are anticipating, based off of these signals, the sentiment shift and all the other signs that we see, that the bottom is in, especially after seeing such big astronomical growth weeks. So, for example, just since the election and last week, so a week ago, 4th of November to now, looking at a, at a rally of over 100 and 25%, so almost 130, 30% here. So very nice gains, especially with the volume. We know that that is a very nice move and that's not any sort of manipulation at all. That just shows a lot of strength in buying and a lot of confidence returning to this sector and space. And especially when we look at memes coins, but what we do have and know is that we are extremely parabolic and we've honestly passed the parabolic stage and just gotten extremely vertical. And we know that vertical moves either to the upside or downside are never sustainable. So we do know that some sort of pullback and consolidation is not only coming, but is necessary as well. Now, does that mean that we actually can't still see another huge day of upside? No, definitely not. Obviously, we know that, especially with volume coming in, we could still see another couple of days. Obviously, that's not a prediction or guarantee, but just know that obviously the risk is a lot higher right now since we are in this vertical stage of this move to actually see a little bit more pullback. And typically when we do see moves like this, we know that some of the strongest chart setups that we can see is actually a prolonged period of consolidation, establishing some support lines and actually confirming that this move has a lot of strength, especially with a higher base of support. Now we have been seeing a lot of signs that Dogecoin and some of the other meme coins are actually gonna be some of the first to come in and provide a lot of that upside move and kind of be an indication that a lot of alts are gonna be following suit as well. Because in typical market trends, especially for this crypto space, we know that Bitcoin is always the first to rally. And then immediately following that, we do start to see some of the larger cap altcoins, followed by a lot of some of the more speculative and lower cap coins as well. But we know that those moves are coming. In fact, it's just kind of a matter of when and which ones will ultimately get a lot of that hype and attention. So for example, we know that the other big meme coin in the market cap space is Shiba Inu, and we are looking at number 10. So we do have Dogecoin and Shiba Inu as number 10 coins based off of market cap, which is definitely extremely crazy to think that since these are especially meme coins, don't really have any quote unquote utility other than strong communities and a lot of history that uh, is a little bit more of that opportunity and speculation. So Nonetheless, we do know that very, very good indications of a lot of sentiment and hype coming back in, 
because typically we do see that flow into meme coins first, and then those do typically trickle into some of the more other projects that do have a little bit more utility, such as the layer ones and things like that. So do you want to zoom out here for a second, look at kind of the overall historical pattern of cryptos like these, because as we see time and time again, they have a lot of big vertical moves that end up with a slow taper off, big vertical moves, slow taper off. Likely we're going to expect in this instance, a big vertical move, probably a slow taper off before the next big spike, because we know we are in bull cycle right now. So obviously previously over the last three, four years, we have seen those play out where we do have those big cycles play and a pullback. But if we actually go ahead and look back here to the previous cycle where we we're making the all time highs, we saw that a little bit in effect, just not necessarily as great. So, for example, if we actually look at the period of January 2021, huge, nice rally followed by a nice pullback here, kicking off the exponential moving averages on this weekly, providing a very nice base level of support, pretty much coming in just below the five cent level before finally having another couple of huge weeks of very nice upside. And that's where we're getting a lot of hype coming in for Dogecoin here. Obviously following that big pullbacks. So don't necessarily think we're gonna be seeing a prolonged pullback right now because we're not at that stage just yet. But like we said, on the shorter term, we are still maintaining dominant trends. And that's what we're gonna be looking at right now, not necessarily this longer term, but just know that eventually at some point we are gonna see a very nice rally followed by the prolonged pullback here. But like we said, not looking at the longer term charts just yet because Shorter terms are in still effect. So if we, for example, flip down into this 15 minute chart, we can just see how very nicely this is trending to the upside, maintaining a very nice bullish exponential moving average here, along with setting higher highs and higher lows and having a very nice trend still intact on the shorter term. Now, once we actually change the trend on some of the shorter term, that's when we're actually gonna start zooming out. Then we'll look at the one hour, for example, and say, hey, what's it gonna take to change the trend on the one hour? Right now, still very bullish, and the thing about this too is that we're starting to see a big gap starting to increase between these exponential moving averages, specifically from the 12 all the way down to the 50, this gap is growing. So as you can see, when we do look at the gap getting very small, that's a big period of consolidation, a tightening range, not necessarily as much price action, but along with that down here on the volume, a little bit more minimal volume as well before huge spikes of volume do push this price up. So as long as that volume does still stay constant, this trend does still stay intact, we will continue to see higher highs coming in here for Dogecoin. And then, like we said, just going to start looking at changing the trend, then to the four hour, then to the daily. And then keep in mind, too, once we do start to change trend on the daily or actually show confirmations of the top being in based on the shorter term trends changing, then that's where we actually do look for what our downside targets are here on this longer term. And we know to be a little bit more patient since we do have to normalize and cool down here on some of the longer terms. So for example, if we wanna do a historical comparison between the start of the year, nice spring rally here and what we're currently experiencing, if we pull up technicals, for example, we're looking at about the same level of being overextended here. So if we look at percent growth and gain from that instance, from the top there down to the trend of pulling back, kicking off a 50 period EMA, about a 38% pullback. Then from that point, looking at about an 80% rally from there. So hypothetically, let's just assume we do actually run down to test some of the lower levels, about a 40% pullback would be normal down to about the 20 cent mark, 20 cent mark up to the next all time high or the next trend high would put us coming in just shy of about the 40 cent level. And that's also keep in mind too, if we just have another repeat of this setup in this scenario, but likely seeing something where we do have a little bit of a pullback confirming a support back testing off the exponential moving averages and then continuing on is typically what we do start to see in a lot of these strong markets because we do need to have sell offs cooldowns, and also then in that instance, have a little shakeout where we do get hyper rejuvenated, great buying pressure, and then we do start to see price resuming back to the upside. Do you want to flip back into the weekly chart though, just because we need to, to zoom out far enough to look at some of these upside resistance points. Obviously they were a little bit ago. The last time we were seeing prices at this level was October of 2021. So just over three years ago that we were seeing prices for Doge here. And that was pretty much coming in right before the Bitcoin all-time high at that time. So Good sign right now to see this early in the cycle prices returning to that level. Like we said, from that point to the all time high would be plenty of growth to the upside to actually shoot for and look at. But right now, specific levels, obviously in the current, we're looking at big resistances due to a lot of these points where we've seen prices get stuck up at on those bounce attempts back during the 2021 cycle. 
But honestly, after a lot of these prices peak, we don't necessarily have that much in terms of trading price technical targets. So it is going to be a lot of upside move. But because, like we said, we do get so vertical, that does mean a lot of volatility, a lot of price movements. And that's why we don't set a lot of price targets for resistance or support in these type of moves. So one of the strongest things we could ultimately end up doing is spending a little bit of longer time in acquired level end zone. And that's what really confirms established longer term support. And then we really see prices start to explode from that point. But basing this off a Wyckoff accumulation pattern, we know that we've likely already seen the phase D for this very nice phase E breakout, which is what we have seen here over the last few weeks. Now, I do want to actually flip over to Bitcoin here because we do need to talk about how we are going to be experiencing a little bit of a pullback as well when we don't know. But we do know that the best scenario would actually be a back test of this previous all time high kind of right around the seventy-three dollars to $74,000 level. And that's where we did see the previous all-time high come in and set before this huge explosive move over the last couple of weeks here. So if we do, in fact, start to see Bitcoin slow down here, change trend on the shorter term, and actually start to see signs of pulling back to test this previous all-time high as a support level, as well as allow these exponential moving averages to roll up, then that's also going to have a pretty big impact on the rest of the crypto space and altcoin space. But we do know that that is normal and to be expected, and that is essential for a longer, stronger term move. So seeing a pullback to that magnitude would have us looking at the previous level of closing resistance right around 28 cents below that would be about 22 cents. So like we said, even based off a percentage pullback could be looking at up to about a 40% pullback, which would have us aligning with about the 20 cent level. So pulling back about 40% or so, yeah, right around the upper low 20s rather. And that's a very, very nice point, not only for previous support here over as well, but also the previous resistance point here on the most recent trend high move. Definitely been hugely exciting for Dogecoin. So congrats to all the bulls holding Dogecoin here. Very nice and obviously extremely nice to see this level of hype and excitement continue for crypto, especially this early in the cycle. Great signs up ahead. So it's going to be a very nice and fun cycle. With that, though, that is going to go ahead and wrap up the show. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, like, and subscribe if you have not done so just yet. Also, make sure to let me know what you thought and drop all questions, comments, issues, disagreements, all that stuff down in the comment sections below. Or feel free to reach out and contact me over on Twitter or X at coin underscore trades is the handle over on Twitter or X. Looking forward to chatting with everyone over there. That is going to wrap it up for now, though. So stay safe, take care, coin traders, and I'll catch you back in the next video.